on this episode of Marshall and Amy. First day here in Madrid. The park's beautiful, dude. We have just walked from the barrio La Latina. Ready to dig into some more tapas. It smells incredible in here. It's so good. It like smells. Finally here in Madrid with my sister. We're exploring today, getting some really good food, and we're gonna bring you guys along. There she is. <laughs> Kate doesn't feel very good right now. She has a cold or something, or the flu. She doesn't have COVID. But... Yes, thank God it's not. COVID. No COVID. But anyway, we're gonna keep exploring. Bye. Kate, tell us what we're doing right now. So, we have just walked from the barrio La Latina, where I live, and we're walking to Retiro. There's a lot of really beautiful barrios that we just walked through, and when we get into Retiro, I'm hoping that the rose garden has bloomed, because the weather's really nice. And it's starting to get warm here, and then hopefully we'll see some cherry blossoms and they can kind of look around the park, see the lake, and see kind of the natural side of Madrid. This is one of the most beautiful parks here in Madrid, although there's a lot. So we'll do a retiro today, and then we'll check out Casa de Campo tomorrow, and maybe some other popular ones for the rest of the trip. All right, so Kate was saying that this is one of the side gates into these, or the gardens. It's a park, and there are some really yeah, beautiful the gardens open, like, inside, like the rose garden. Yeah. You can see a lot of cherry blossoms. This is definitely one of the most touristic parks here, so it's usually full of a lot of tourists. Um, so it's usually pretty crowded, but we just entered through the side gate, so maybe... It's looking a little less crowded right now. Maybe it won't be too crazy today. So far we're walking around the park. Um, it's very big, a very big park. Lots of people riding bicycles. There's an entire soccer or football field, wherever you're from. Uh, a bunch of tennis courts, paddleball courts, handball courts, basketball courts, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we're just walking around. Everything's kind of coming into bloom. It feels great out right now, as you can see. I've got a short sleeve shirt on. The park's beautiful, dude. the glass palace here in Retiro Park. I think we're gonna go inside, it's free, Kate said. So she got in line. We're gonna go meet up there inside. There she is. Okay, so I was fooled when we first came in here. You come in and you think, Oh wow, that's a beautiful like old stone structure. It runs basically the length of this whole thing. But when you come up to it, it's actually cardboard. Cardboard. Not sure what the purpose of it is, but pretty cool. So apparently this like glass museum houses exhibits and the exhibit on display right now is the big cardboard display. I don't know the significance of it or anything, but that's the one on display and that's it. That's all that's in here. It's kind of cool. Like you would never know it was cardboard unless you look really close. Yeah, literally until you get right up on it, you don't even know. So cool. pretty cool, but just one exhibit. So it's pretty quick, free, super cool. The building is amazing. This yeah. glass atrium, 
The birds are chirping, like all the windows are open and stuff. It's really cool. Yeah. Anyway, onward and upward. Yep, let's go find Kate again. Marsha are having a few estrellas. So good. I always forget how good Spanish beer is. I love Spanish beer. It is so good. Yes. And it's always interesting because I think coming from the US, especially coming from Cincinnati, we mm -hmm. have so many beer options here mm -hmm. and they do still have breweries, but it's really common to just go and say like, um, ask for a caña or estrella, or they have a couple of different types um, that most of them have, but it's common just to ask for like a doble or um, a caña. Okay, explain what a caña is. I love the concept of that. Okay, a caña is just like a small beer. They have small cans of beers. Um, and so they'll bring that out and maybe it's like this big. And it's just like for with your tapa, right? Yeah, you have it with your tapa and you can typically, you order this and then they'll bring you um, some free tapas. This is the tortilla de patata. They give it to you with bread and it's eggs, onion, potato, potatoes. Um, sometimes it doesn't have onions in it, it depends. Sometimes it has cheese in it as well. Looks That's good. Really good. Good, really moist. And then this is just like. This is potatoes, patatas, and this is patatas con alioli. Okay. And I think it's pronounced in the US like aioli. This tortilla is amazing. Dude, if you had a hangover, this would be the best thing to eat in the world. for the rose gardens to be blooming, but there's a couple. Here's one right here. So what's the plan now, peeps? Getting into like a bookstore? No, it's not a bookstore, it's a book street. It has all these outdoor vendors that sell all kinds of books. Some of them are really ancient. Um, they sell a few in English. I've gotten a few books here. Most of them are in Spanish, but it's really cool to look at and explore. You can see some really old books. The vibe is very nice, very chill. So the book street was just a kind of a quick trip. It's pretty cool, pretty cool to see. Uh, and now we're kind of going deeper into the city looking for some tapas and some other delicious food, a little bit more drink, but we just came across a living wall. Uh, it's like the entire wall is covered in plants, foliage, and uh, it's pretty cool. It's actually right there. Whole thing's covered, whole thing's growing. So it's a living wall. Kate might be ditching us here soon, just really not feeling good. She's got a party to go to tonight, so might be splitting ways. Yes, I'm ready to have my siesta. She's in need of her beauty siesta. Where we at? Katie tried to drop us off at like a very traditional place, but we were just kind of looking around for like a cheaper, just like quick tapa option. And so I'm sure this is a little bit touristy, but we just came to a place called Tapa Tapa. It's like a tapas bar. And we ordered um, basically like some french fries with alioli, which is like aioli, and croquetas, cheese croquetas, which we've been dying for since we got here. Some pin con tomate. And I got a glass of cava, which is like the Spanish version version of champagne or prosecco. And Marshall got a beer, Estrella. So ready to dig into some more tapas. I'm excited. This place looks pretty good. A little touristy, but and everyone around us is speaking Spanish, so I'm like, 
Yeah, it can't be that bad. Here's what we got. Straya. Got these fries. Those croquette fries. I'm excited. Are you excited? Very. All right, food just got here. We got some potatoes and aioli. And croquettas. They're slippery. <laughs> A little bit of small portions, but they are topless, so. Holy. I've had one of these in, what it be, almost four years. So good. I mean, like, melt in your mouth. Just. Literally, when you bite into it, it just, like, melts in your mouth. They're crispy. Oh my god, they're, they're so, so good. Thick. We just wrapped up our little makeshift dinner out of tapas um, with some drink and some food. It was really good. Now we're about to get the check, get one more drink somewhere else, and then mosey our way back to Kate's apartment. Paid out, it was very good. And now we are on the hunt for one more drink. That's the goal, one more. And then we're gonna go back and see Kate, see how her sick little self is doing. All right, so we just uh, popped into a little bar here. Uh, looks real friendly, real warm. A little, a little traditional bar. We pulled up to one of these little guys. And we got some white wine. I got another beer. It smells incredible in here. They make this this like span this this shrimp dish in here. It's called gambas a mio. And it's it, shrimp and like garlic sauce. It smells about as good as it smells. Like I couldn't. They, they this guy right there. He made one fresh and walked right by us, and the smell like grabbed my nose. It was incredible. Okay, so we were told that in Madrid, one of the most like common drinks to order is vermouth. And Marshall is gonna try his very first one. I've heard it's an acquired taste, so I'm really excited to see what he thinks. So here it is, dark of dark of color. Uh, it looks like there's a little like orange peel in it. He put a little cube of ice. Never had vermouth before, so let's give it a try. Cheers. Very delicious, but it's not sweet. It's not like it's not what you would expect. It almost tastes like a, like a if a drink was made out of this, almost like a almost like a pot roast kind of. Wow, well, let me taste it. Mm. Do you get that at all? Oh, I think it's sweet, but it it has these like almost like a little bit bitter, but like I do get the savory notes like cinnamon or like. A little bitter. It's really Cinnamon good. Cinnamon for sure. I got the same thing. Way better than I expected. Feels like a good like um, a pair of teeth. Like it opens your palate. Yeah. It's really good. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Delicioso. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> okay, so we just had the vermouth and the beer and the wine at I don't even know what the name of the place was. What's it called? Hold on, stop, stop, stop. It is called Un momento. La Casa del Abuelo. So grandfather. La, no, la Casa del Abuelo was amazing. People in there were super friendly. The drinks were delicious. The vermouth they had on tap, very traditional, no like tables or anything. The, there was one guy in there who was super friendly. I became like super friendly with him. But no, uh, the place was super authentic. We made great friends with the people working there. It was it was my first like memorable experience in Madrid. It was awesome. We'll definitely go back. But now we're gonna go check in on Kate because she's not feeling too good. See what she's thinking about the party tonight, and then we're gonna come back out for some more drinks. Just got beers. I got uh, an Australia, and she got a cava. 
little expensive here, but while we're walking around, we figured we wanted a libation, so we got some beers, and now we're getting ready to walk around. Yes. You gave us a little taste. I like the best one. It's so good. It was like melt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. It's, it's candy meat. Meat candy. Yeah? So that guy, we, I, he was started shaving the jamon straight from like the leg of the, the pig. And I wanted to film, so I just said, puedo filmar? Meaning like, can I film? And he was like, of course, of course. So I filmed him, filmed him. And like mid cut, he cut two pieces off to give to us as well. So like That's super so friendly, sure. super cool. Any country you go to, you can have a great time. You can have a terrible time. It's all circumstantial. But every time we've been to Spain, we are so friendly. It's so welcoming. Okay guys, it's been a great day uh, with Kate. Kind of the first day here in Madrid. Huh? So we're gonna kind of call it a night here. It's been awesome and we'll see you tomorrow next time on Marshall and Amy. Okay, we have crawled out of the depths of our flu abyss. Because it's Semana Santa in Spain, which is Holy Week leading up to Easter. This is gonna be a serious procession here.